All right, so in this video, we'll look at the new migration system in Django 1.7. This new system effectively replaces South for handling migrations or making changes to your database. We'll look specifically at a solid workflow that you can use for creating and applying migrations. And for further information, check out the three blog posts on the RealPython website, which go further into migrations and how they work. This video will just give you the basics you need to get started. And I'll have links to those blog posts in this video's description. So I went ahead and set up a basic project to work with. It's called My Contacts Project. And then I added an app called Contacts. And so the point that we're concerned about is the model. So let's just check that out. So we have a company model here to keep track of various companies, which could be for a basic sales CRM system, for example. This model contains the field's name, about, date added, and date modified. Pretty straightforward. And you can also see that there is a migrations folder in this app, which is where all of our migrations are going to be stored. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our first migration. And to do that, we simply run the command manage.py, make migrations, and then the name of our application, which is contacts. And of course, you need to add the contacts app to your installed apps, which I forgot to do. So I will do that real quick. Let's try that again. So manage.py, make migration contacts. And so you should see the following message here. And this just says that a new migration was created for the contacts application. The migration file is named 001 underscore initial dot py, which is a standard convention. And this creates the company model, which we just looked at. So next we need to apply this migration to update our database schema. And we do that by running the command manage.py and then migrate. And so since this is a new app, not only did it, our, did it run our contacts migration, which you can see here, but it also created all the initial Django tables as well. So pretty easy, right? So actually the first time I did this, I needed a sanity check and I just double checked to make sure that it worked. So let's just go ahead and do that. So if we open up, our database in SQLite, the SQLite browser. Just go ahead and open this up in the Finder. You can see our contacts table here, and it has the same fields that we specified in our Django models. So it worked. Cool. All right, so to recap, we created a model, then initialized our migration, and finally we applied it. That's really it. And actually, in the majority of cases, when you add or update a model, you will follow this basic workflow. So now let's take a look at two more common scenarios, making changes to a model and adding a new model with a foreign key. So if we go back to models.py, so let's make a simple change to this model. So let's go ahead and add a new field for a company nickname. So I can just say nickname equals models that char field. Let's put a max length in there. And let's say blank equals true. And null is true as well. Cool. So I'll go ahead and save that. And again, if we go ahead and run this command, this will make the migration. And so this just states exactly what we're doing. We're adding a new field to the model. And so now let's go ahead and apply that migration. So we'll just do manage.py migrate. And this just applied that second migration, updating our database schema. So now if we open up the migrations folder, 
you can see both of our mi migration files here. And in that second file, where we updated the model, you can see that there are some dependencies. And basically, this just says that the initial migration of 001 underscore initial must be ran before the current one because you can't make updates to a model that, that does not yet exist. And for more on this, as well as digging deeper into these migration files, check out the accompanying blog posts. And finally, let's go ahead and update our model again and add a foreign key relationship. And let's go ahead and stick with something basic. So let's go ahead and add the following model. And so this model is for an individual contact at a company. And since there's a direct relationship between the company and a contact who works for that same company, which is a one-to-many relationship, we established a foreign key, which you can see here, linking the two together. And again, let's go ahead and create the migration. This is just called 003. And then if we can apply the migration. Cool, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the migration file for that, 003 person. You can see that this migration is dependent upon the second migration that happened before it. So what exactly does that mean again? Well, if the dependency wasn't there, this migration would try to create a foreign key before the company table was even there. Hope that makes sense. Okay, again, you can check out the blog post for more information. And if you'd like to see some more complicated scenarios or how to migrate existing South migrations over to the new Django migration system, for example, please comment below. And thanks for watching.